हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द इलेवेंथ एपिसोड ऑफ एन इंटरव्यू विद मिस्टर राजेश तलवार दिस इज योर होस्ट अनन्या शर्मा सो लास्ट टाइम वी डिस्कस द बुक इन साइड गे लैंड एंड वी कंटिन्यू विद द सेम सीरीज ऑफ दिस बुक बींग द थर्ड सेक्स एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स सो मिस्टर तलवार वेलकम एंड लेट स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द क्वेश्चन दैट इज द बेसिक क्वेश्चन वट इज दिस बुक अबाउट एंड How did you come up with this idea? Hi Ananya, it's good to be with you and your team once again. Uh, on the last episode, we discussed Inside Gay Land, a play, uh, with a lot of uh, reference to the case which I filed in the Delhi High Court many years ago, challenging Section three seventy seven of the Indian Penal Code, the anti sodomy law. Uh, around that time, once our petition was admitted. my attention drifted to another sexual minority that of the hijras the hijras now have existed for thousands of years in india and uh, they have been among the most persecuted lot so i thought let me file a case on their behalf as well uh, but uh, unlike the situation today where the uh, sexual minorities are united you have the lgbt community uh, at that time the minorities were divided they were squabbling even amongst themselves so uh, my idea to file a case on behalf of the hijra community was not very well received so uh, what kind of case were you planning to file on behalf of the hijras uh, well uh, just like i filed the section 377 a uh, case challenging section 377's constitutionality i was thinking a petition could be filed on behalf of the hijra community challenging the discrimination that they are subjected to asking that they should have some reservation there should be some affirmative action programs in their favor uh, that uh, even the anti sodomy law uh, could be questioned from a hijra point of view Uh, so there were many dimensions and uh, in fact i suggested to one of the community members uh, and they were happy to take up the idea but i also needed a group a legitimate human rights or activist group uh, who would be willing to take up the case and at the time nobody was willing to come forward uh, so i realized that the prejudice against hijras was much more entrenched as compared even against gays uh, there's a lot of prejudice against gays but the prejudice against hijras is much more uh, even the so called enlightened human rights activist community uh, they were not willing to come forward they said oh these people they are very troublesome they are very aggressive they are very violent they force you to give give them money they they are very troubling but this is because they have no alternative they have been reduced to this uh, to make a living uh, that makes their case all the more pathetic uh, that makes redress all the more important so how did you come to know about the hijras and their plight uh, i had law offices as a lawyer i had my law office uh, quite close to india gate uh, it was a small office i was a young lawyer and sometimes i had hijras who came in uh, to ask for arms and i think uh, unlike other lawyers possibly um i would ask them to come in out of curiosity and uh, sometimes engage them in conversation and when i spoke to them i found they were very nice people i mean giving a small amount of money didn't really cost me anything and i was i wanted to satisfy my curiosity so over time a few of them they started dropping over Uh, i would order tea for them and for myself and we would have conversations and i would come to know about them and then i understood that uh, they were not very different from the transgendered community and uh, i wanted to do something for them so the case which i had thought of filing i even prepared the case uh, but i wanted the, an activist group uh, to be engaged in it and they were not willing i said look this is going to be a very strong case if we file it in the delhi high court 
I will say that the hijras are so discriminated that as petitioners they are not even allowed to enter the high court. Because this is what I thought. I thought if we file a petition on behalf and we get some of the petitioners to come in, they'll be stopped at the high court door. Nobody will allow them to come in. They'll say, oh, you are beggars, you are troublesome. How, are you, how dare you enter the high court? And then I would say that here at the seat of justice, these people are so discriminated against that they are not even able to enter the halls, the hallowed halls of justice. So I was confident we would have a very strong case. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the human rights group, the civil liberties groups, none of them were willing to take it forward. Most of them, as I mentioned in the previous episode, were not even concerned overly about gay rights. Uh, many of them were very left-wing and interested in armed revolution against the state, so they had that kind of romance, uh, which uh, personally I think is very immature and uh, very negative, uh, given the history of left-wing movements across the world, uh, which have become too radical, uh, that's a separate issue. So I thought, okay, uh, if you can't do anything about it, let's write about it. So I thought I would write a book on the third sex and human rights. So you've just told us that the hijras are like the transgenders. So can you simplify for our viewers who transgenders are? A transgender person or a transsexual is somebody who has the physical, external and internal appearance and body parts of one sex, but who has the irrefutable conviction that he actually belongs to the opposite sex. So Hijra community, the researchers have found that many of them have identified with the female sex, most of them have identified with the female sex, but many of them they feel they are neither men nor women. So you could say that uh, uh, some of them believe they are more men uh, and others believe they are completely like women. Uh, so uh, whereas uh, in the West they are more, uh, they want to divide things into this or that. Uh, so. Uh, the transsexual definition is more that when you believe irrefutably that you belong to the opposite sex. Uh, the hijra is a wider category which includes uh, people who may feel they belong to the opposite sex but who may also feel they are a third sex. They belong to neither female nor, men, uh, nor male. So the hijra is, uh, they may not always believe that they are necessarily women. Most of them do, but some may believe they are neither men nor women. There is an American sociologist, Serena Nanda, who has written a very interesting book on the hijras. It's called Neither Men Nor Women. There were two important books which I read which made me understand hijras better. One was this book by Serena Nanda, uh, very well recognized in the acad academic community. And the second was a book by an Indian S.K. Sharma, Hijras, the Labeled Deviants. Uh, so, uh, in both of them, uh, in interviews with Hijras, they found that most of them, when they were children, they would like to dress up as girls. They identified as belonging to the opposite sex, to the female sex. But some of them said, as they told Serena, we are neither men nor women. So, writing this book in itself required a lot of uh, research. So, as a lawyer, how did you manage to find the time? Uh, when my proposal to file a case on behalf of the community before the courts didn't fly uh, with the people I spoke to, then I thought of writing this book. But then I was faced with a dilemma, where would I get the time, how would I get the time? I was already teaching law in the evenings at university, in the day I was practicing law, would I be able to research the issue properly to do a good book on it? Around that time, interestingly enough, uh, I applied for and I was awarded a scholarship to go to Nottingham to do my master's there, an LLM in International Human Rights Law. So I put the Hijra book on hold and I went to do further studies. When I went to Nottingham, since I went as a relatively mature student, uh, I chose to do most of the essays uh, instead of the examinations. And after that was over, 
we had a period of a few months where we had to write a dissertation. So there were two things in my mind, two topics. One was I wanted to write a book on reforming the United Nations. And the other was I thought, why not write a book on the Hijras? And uh, eventually I decided that uh, there are many people who can write about uh, reforming the United Nations. Uh, and I had not worked with the UN till then. So I thought, why not just do a book on the Hijras? There's so little material on them. Uh, there's so little written on them. And uh, whatever is written also is not written from a human rights perspective. Uh, there was more material on the transgender and transsexual people who had filed cases before the European Court of Human Rights. And I thought, well, why not write a book on the Hijras and compare them with their fellow colleagues in the West and what uh, their colleagues in the West, what they have been fighting for, what are the rights they have secured. So did you find the people in West more progressive towards the transgender people? Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, you know, historically, uh, in India, we were far more progressive with regard to sexual minorities, be they gay people or be they transgender people. There were Rajas in ancient India, before the British came, who even, you know, would mark certain land to be given away to the Hijra community. The Hijras were accepted in society. Uh, when the British came, uh, they passed various laws, for example, Section 377, the anti-sodomy law, that was part of the British Victorian attitudes. And they also thought of the Hijras as criminals, as uh, deviants, and uh, they passed some laws, uh, they passed uh, criminal tribes and uh, Hijra's law. Uh, they outlawed, uh, they forced the kings uh, who were giving land to Hijra's and giving them certain rights. They told the kings, no, no, you cannot give these rights to them. Uh, these are uh, criminals. They are like criminal tribes. So they passed legislation against them. So historically, we were more progressive. Then under British influence, uh, we started accepting sodomy, anti-sodomy laws. We started treating the hijras badly. Uh, the rights which they had previously, they started getting eroded. So that's the historical context. But yes, when I went to the UK, I found that there was greater awareness of transgender issues. But nonetheless, there was also a great deal of prejudice. Uh, the most surprising thing for me was that a lot of prejudice was there against hijras from the feminist community. Okay, so um, that is surprising. Why were the feminists against the transgender community? Uh, yes, it surprised me as well. You probably heard of a lady, a leading feminist by the name of Germaine Greer. Germaine Greer wrote a book uh, many decades ago called The Female Eunuch, and that made her a celebrated person across uh, the world. And she became a leading feminist and uh, she was teaching in, I believe it was Cambridge University, uh, in a college which was only for women. Uh, so uh, all the staff were also only women. There was a male to female transsexual who joined the college. And German Grey mounted a campaign that she should be thrown out. She said, this is a college only for women. This transgendered person should be thrown out of the community. I should mention that the transgendered person was an astrophysicist. She was uh, uh, very knowledgeable. She had published great research. Uh, she was an intellectual. And she was subject to this hostile reaction from German Greer and certain feminists who supported her. Uh, so the wider community came out against Greer and in support of the astrophysicist. Uh, but just, just to show you that this is one instance where a leading feminist said, oh, we are against the transsexuals. And what was the argument? They said, oh, well, these are men who are trying to usurp female bodies. This is a kind of rape. Greer actually uses the word. She says, this is a rape of our bodies. There was a transgender person who joined a feminist organization. I think it was in New York. And there, when they discovered that she was not a born woman, but a male to female transsexual, 
uh, they wanted to get rid of her. She finally wrote a book called The Empire Strikes Back, a post-transgendered manifesto in which she spoke about the bad experience that she had faced at the hands of feminists. So uh, uh, I often find that's why I said uh, the human rights community, the activist community, the so-called democrat democratic rights community, they are also very often pigeonholed. They are not really open in their thinking. Uh, so the prejudice which I discovered here, to some extent I found similar prejudice there. I should mention at this stage that, uh, clarify, that of course we have been focusing more here on male to female transsexuals, but one other reason why hijra and transsexual is different is because transsexual is a wider term which includes female to male transsexuals as well. So there are many cases of women who are born with the body of a woman, but they feel they are actually men. Uh, just next to Nottingham in another university, there was a law professor whom I met briefly uh, out of uh, interest. I had gone to the university and I met him. He was a female to male transsexual. He had written and published books. He had written and published articles in leading journals. He was born as a woman and later through sex reassignment surgery, he changed to a man. 